hey guys welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here you're welcome to sew with mediva and if you're a returning subscriber or viewer thank you for sticking to my channel so in today's video i'll be showing you guys how to cut and sew a simple short pant with zipper fly so this is what the shirt looks like after i was done you can see how beautiful it looks and i achieved the style using just one yard and a quarter of ankara fabric so if you found this video useful don't forget to give it a thumbs up leave a comment subscribe to my channel share with your loved ones so let's go ahead now to fold the fabric so this is the fabric we'll be working with it's ankara fabric and i made use of one yard and a quarter for this short i have my tape room my rollers and my scissors so we're going to draft this on the pattern paper first before we transfer to the fabric for more accuracy so I have my paper in a fold of 2. So to get the amount of fabric or paper to fold, divide your round hip measurement by 4 and add about 4 inches extra to it. The extra is going to be for your crotch extension. So this shot is going to have a band of 1.5 inches at the top. So you can make use of 2 inches, whatever you want for your band. So I'm going to place my tape rule 1.5 inches above the starting line to mark all the vertical measurements. And the first one is from the waist to the hip line, which is 9 inches for me. So go ahead to mark yours. And then from the waist to the crotch depth is 12.5 inches. I normally calculate mine by dividing my round hip by 4 and adding 1 inch to it. But this is because it's a high waist shot. And then from that point, I'll take the waist to the tie line, which is 15 inches for me. And then the full length of those shorts is 21 inches plus folding allowance. So I'll go ahead now to just extend the lines. So go ahead to extend your lines as well. And then after that, I would um, label the lines. The first line is the hip line, the crotch line, the tie line, and the full length. So after doing that, the next thing you want to do is to divide your round hip by 4. So mine is 11.5 inches, and I'll add 1 inch to it for seam allowance, making 12.5 inches. So I'm going to mark that 12.5 inches on the hip line, the crotch line. I'll mark it on the crotch line as well, and also mark it on the waist line. So after taking that 12.5 inches, I'm going to connect the three points together with my ruler. So go ahead to connect yours too. And then this is what we have. So the next thing we want to do is to mark the crotch extension for this front panel. So go ahead to measure what you have on this line. So mine is 12.5 inches. And then go ahead to divide it by 4. So you're going to use that to get the crotch extension of for your front panel. So I got about 3.1 inches for mine. And then I'll come over to this point and come up by 1 inch. So I use a curved ruler now to connect these points together to form my front crotch extension. So after doing that, this is what we have. So after that, the next thing is to mark your tie measurement. So come over to the tie line and place your round tie measurement divided by 2. So mine is 14 inches. And then I'll add 1 inch for seam allowance, making 15 inches. So it's the same thing with my crotch line. And then on the full length of my shorts, I'm going to subtract 1 inch from that 15 inches, making 14 inches. And then I'll connect the points. So before I connect the points together, I'm going to fold in my allowance this way. This is going to be the folding allowance at the base. So that by the time I cut it out, when I'm folding, it is going to be equal all around. I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. So I'm going to just go ahead and mark that 14 inches again on this fold. And then I'll connect the points together. So by the time you cut it out, you're going to understand the, the reason why we folded up the allowance. So this is what we have. So the next thing you want to do is to mark the waistline. And for that, you're going to start from the center front. You're going to take your waistline from this center front. So mine is 9.5 inches. My round waist divided by 4 is 9.5 inches. I added 1 inch for that and 1 inch for seam allowance, making 11.5 inches. So I'm going to just mark it there. And then I'll take my curved ruler and connect it down to my hip line. So connect whatever you have down to your hip line. This is it. So the next thing to do is to mark out the dart line. So come over to the crotch line and get the midpoint of this line. So the full length of this crotch line is 15 inches for me. So the half of it is going to be 7.5 inches. So go ahead to mark yours. And then from that point, I will extend the line up to the waistline. So this is going to be my dart line. So I'll take 0 0.5 inches on both sides of the line. And then come down by 4 or 5 inches. You can do 5 inches. And then I will just connect the points together to form my dart.
so after connecting the points this is what we have so the last and final thing before we cut out is to mark out the zipper fly so i'll come over to the center front and come out by two inches so i'll mark two inches this way all the way down to the hip line and then i'll use my ruler to connect the points together after marking that two inches to your hip line use your ruler to connect the points together and then from that hip line i'm going to just go ahead to form a curve this way down to the crotch extension so just go ahead to form out a curve this way so this is basically all for the zipper fly i'm going to um, just connect the lines together and then we'll go ahead to cut out this pattern so use your pins to hold down this fold before you cut it out so just watch close, closely how i'm going to cut this on um, pattern so i'm going to just cut out the zipper fly area this way to the crotch and then i'll take the waistline and then divide it into two open up the sides so by the time you're done with that you're going to have the lower part looking this way so when you fold it in it's going to fold in neatly it will not have any extra space on this side so this um this is, this is the zipper fly so it's going to go inside on the front panel i'll show you guys how to do that so let's go ahead to use these front panels now to cut out the back so to cut out the back go ahead to place your front panel on the pattern paper that is in the fold of two so mine is in the fold of two and i use my pins to hold it down so and then go ahead to fold in your zipper fly allowance because you won't be needing it for the back so just fold it in and use your pin to hold it down you can see it has gone back to a basic short um pattern without um zipper fly so go ahead to hold it so i'll be using a different method for this shorts because i don't want it really fitted if you want to make yours really fitted i have a tutorial that can guide you on how to sew a fitted pant so you can use that method for this shorts so i'll come up down to this point by two inches and then i'll come over to the um hip line and take two inches as well and then on this crotch extension i'm going to extend mine by three inches so you can do 2.5 inches depending on what you want for yours so i normally use the same thing i used for my front panel for it and then i'll come over to the waistline and take two inches as well so i'll use my ruler to just connect the points together so this is going to make the back panel bigger than the front panel because i want my shorts not fitted so if you want a fitted short i'll leave a link in the description box then if you follow that method your short is going to be very fitted at the back so i'll go ahead and just extend this line up to meet that two inches point and then connect it to meet my waistline i'll connect it to meet my waistline forming a slant so after connecting the points this is what it should look like you should have a slanted line this way so the next thing to do is to take the crotch extension curve to take the curve so i'm going to come up to this corner and take one inch just like i did with the front panel <clears throat> and then i'll use my curved ruler to connect it to miss the crotch extension this way for me the curve and then i'll come over to this um hip line and come out by two inches so i'll take two inches on the hip line and take two inches on the full length so this is going to just make um, room for ease at the back so you to make room for ease at the back for your shorts so after connecting the points i'll just form a curve this way to meet the crotch extension so this is basically all for the back panel so let's go ahead now to cut it out so before we cut it out go ahead to extend the dark line to the back panel waistline so this is what we have so let's go ahead now to cut out the back panel so i'm just going to cut it out this way So after cutting out i'll just remove the front panel from it and you'll see what we have so this is what the back panel looks like so we have two pieces of the front and of the back so i'm going to use this now to cut on my fabric and show you guys next so i've gone ahead to use the patterns to cut on my fabric and this is what we have so i cut out two pieces each of the front panel and two pieces of the back panel so right now we'll go ahead to remove the pattern paper from the fabric and then we'll start joining we're going to start with the front panel so for the front panel the first thing we want to do is to insert the zipper and this is the zipper i'll be working with so the first thing you want to do is to come over to this waistline and mark that two inches we used as our zipper allowance so i'll just don't mark that two inches all the way down and then i'll determine where i want my zip to stop which is eight inches from the waistline so i'll mark that eight inches there and just rule out a straight line 
I would have a straight line. So that's why my zip is going to stop. So I'll get my zipper now and then I'll determine which side is going to be for the left and which is going to be for the right. And then I'll go ahead to separate it. So I'll place the zipper meant for this side on the two inches line that I marked. So you are flipping your zipper to the other side. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. And then I'll use my pins to hold it down. Use your pins to hold it down so that you can have a neat finishing. So pin down that zipper now to that two inches line that you marked up to the um the, the way you want your zipper to stop. And then after that, I'm going to take it to my sewing machine now and stitch it down all the way down to that point i want my zipper to stop i'll stitch it all the way to that point so make sure you stitch it very close to the zipper and when i'm done i'll show you guys what it looks like so guys before we stitch down the zipper we have to close the crotch area first so i'm going to place the two pieces of the front panel facing each other this way so this is the wrong side now and i'm going to mark the point where i want my zipper to stop so do this before you insert your zipper which is eight inches so i'll come down to that eight inches mark on the wrong side so you're placing the two pieces together right side facing each other to do this and then i'll go ahead to sew down the crotch area this way using half an inch i'll sew this part using half an inch all the way down so when i'm done with that then i'll go ahead to stitch my zipper down like i explained earlier so when i'm done doing that i'll show you guys what it looks like and the next thing to do so guys after i closed up the crotch area this is what we have and this is the front part after stitching down the zipper into the two inches zipper allowance so the next thing is to insert the other zipper so remember we still have another two inches on the other side so this is going to look this way on the pants and the other one is supposed to overlap on it so let me show you guys how to achieve that now so, so i'll get the other side of my zipper and flip my fabric over to the wrong side so that you guys can understand better i'll flip it over to the wrong side so this is what it looks like on the wrong side so this is the other two inches allowance for zipper but for this other side we'll be making use of the two inches zipper allowance we're only going to make use of one inch the, the remaining one inch is going to serve as the overlapping allowance so what i'm going to do now is to take my tape roll and come out from this closed angle of the fold the closed angle of the zipper fold mark one inch from that angle all the way down so i'll go ahead to mark the one inch so you're basically dividing it into two so the remaining half one inch will be the overlapping allowance and then i'll place my zipper on it this way so look the way i'm going to place my zipper on it so let me just go ahead to draw the line down so that i won't make any mistake so i'll um, use my pin to hold my zipper down so i hope you see the way i inserted the zipper so i'll hold it down up to the eight inches point where i want my zipper to stop so i'll hold it down this way and then i'll go ahead now to stitch it down so when you turn it to the right side this is what it's going to look like so when you stitch down that other one it's going to overlap on it this way to overlap on it this way to cover up the zipper in front so when you zip up in front it's going to appear this way so you can see that one inch that we took out sitting on top of the zipper so this is what your zipper is going to look like when you are done you can see the um flyover in front so i'm going to just go ahead and use my chalk to draw out a line so i can see my pins through the um through the fabric so i'm going to just curve it out at that edge so when you stitch it your stitch is going to show in front this way so go ahead to just curve it out when you get to that eight inches mark so this is what it will look like after you are done stitching so when i'm done with that i'll show you guys what it looks like so after i stitch down the second side of the zipper this is what it looks like so let me raise it up for you guys to see how neat this came out so this is what the zipper fly looks like in front this is what it looks like in front and this is what the wrong side looks like so you can see the curve i made after i stitch down this is what we have so i'll go ahead to cut out the excess zipper i have inside and this is what the crotch area looks like so the next thing i want to do is to join the back panels together so i'm going to get them and place them right sides facing each other and then the first thing to do is to close up the crotch area so i'll go ahead to stitch it from the waist i'm going to take one inch from the waist and then i will slant it down to use half an inch to join the crotch area and then i'll take in the that when i'm done taking the dots when i'm done also the points where i want it to stop i'll take in the dots for the front panels as well i'm gonna head to notch it out so i'll show you guys what it looks like when i'm done
so after i took in the dart for the front panel this is what it looks like and this is what the wrong side looks like so for the back i've gone ahead to join the crotch area together and i also took in the dart as you can see so the next thing i want to do is to join the front and the back panels together so i'm going to place them right sides facing each other this way and then we're going to start joining from the crotch area so i'm going to merge the crotch of the front panel to the crotch of the back panel and i'll use my pin to hold it down so match the same points together and hold it down this way and using half an inch i'll go ahead to join to close up the crotch area all the way down and then when i'm done with that i'll come over to the sides i'll merge them together and use one inch seam allowance that i added and stitch it all the way down stitch it all the way down there i'll do the same thing for the other side i'll merge them together and stitch it all the way down so when i'm done doing that i'll show you guys what it looks like so after joining the front and the back panels together this is what it looks like and this is what the crotch area looks like i also went ahead to close up the sides and this is what the back looks like so the next thing we want to do is to insert the waistband so i'm going to go ahead to measure what i have all around the waistline so i'm going to just measure what i have all around the waistline to be sure i have my exact waist measurements so so i have 39 inches here so my round waist measurement is 38 inches so i'm going to take half an inch on both sides of the waistline so that i'll have my exact waist measurement so i'm going to cut out my waistband and add three extra inches to the full length of the waistband so that is i'm going to cut out 41 inches in length because the waistband is going to overlap on each other in front so when i'm done with that i'll show you guys what it looks like so i've gone ahead to cut out the band and for the length of the band i added three inches to my round waist measurement because of the overlapping in front so i have about 41 inches in length here and for the height of my band i'm making use of 1.5 inches and it's in a fold of two so when you open it up i ironed my paper stay on it i cut out four inches initially i folded in half an inch on both sides and then when you fold it up now i'm going to have 1.5 inches so i'm going to um, fold my waistband into two to get the center i'll mark the center point with my chalk on both sides so before i insert it you want to make sure the edges of your waistband is neat so go ahead to flip it to the wrong side this way and stitch it down using half an inch so when you flip it over that point is going to be neat so come over to the other side as well flip it over to the wrong side and then close up the edge and then flip it back to the right side so when you're done with that i'm going to just take my pants this way so starting from the center back which is the center of this um trouser i'm going to insert that midpoint that i marked now i'll insert it into the waist of my shorts this way so there are different methods of inserting your waistband but this method works fine for me so i'll insert it this way you can use your pins to hold it down first and then i'll go ahead to stitch it all the way down so as you're inserting the waist into the um, waistband go ahead to just stitch it down so when you get to the um, center front you're going to have some excess there so that excess is going to cross over on each other when you use your button on it so when i'm done doing that i'll show you guys what it looks like so guys after i inserted the waistband this is what it looks like so you can see the um, overlap in front for the button allowance so you can go ahead to just sew down your button on this side and make your button hole on the other side so this and i also went ahead to fold up the base of the shorts i folded in the base of the shirt as you can see i took in my one inch folding allowance and i ironed it out so this is where we'll be ending this video for today guys i hope you found it useful and i hope you've learned something new today so if you found this video useful don't forget to give it a thumbs up leave a comment subscribe to my channel share with your loved ones and put on your notification bell i'll see you guys in my next video bye